In early spring, when your grass starts breaking dormancy, it's common to find parts of your lawn are starting to green up while other parts of your lawn aren't quite there yet. This is, however, the perfect time to start deciding how tall you're gonna cut your grass throughout the course of the year. In fact, the entire purpose of this video is really to discuss the main things that you have to keep in mind when it comes to choosing a short height of cut versus a tall height of cut. Now, the vast majority of people use a standard rotary mower, so I'm gonna slant this entire video for those people. To get a really short cut, you're gonna to have to use a real mower. You could do a manual reel mower or powered reel mowers. These things can get your height of cut down to kind of that golf course level. For me, that's not my area of expertise. I don't do reel mowing, but I do use rotary mowers like most people across the country. Most rotary mowers on the lowest setting possible will get down to that one and three eighths inch height of cut. On the highest setting, depending on the rotary mower that you have, it's gonna be somewhere between three and three quarters to about four and a half. Standard advice for regular homeowners who aren't really into lawn care is to choose somewhere right in the middle, which is usually around two and three quarters to three inches. That usually works really well for most grass types. Some grass types really do prefer being shorter than that, but even those grass types can perform just fine in that almost three inch height of cut range. Other grass types like being really tall, Let's say for instance, a turf type tall fescue. Although that grass type tends to be cut even taller than two and a half to three inches, it can tolerate two and a half inches just fine. So anywhere in the middle of the range on your lawnmower is gonna be fine for just about any lawn across the country. Now for me, I have tended to cut my lawn very short for a rotary mower. During the 2021 season, I cut my lawn the entire year on the lowest setting possible. I have a handful of mowers. Some of those mowers, it was around one and a half inches. Other mowers, it was around one and three eighths inch. But this coming year, I've decided that I'm going to cut my grass a little bit taller. And here's why. On the lowest setting possible on a rotary mower, you're covering a large span with a spinning blade. So if you have any rolls or humps or divots in your lawn, you are very likely to have an uneven cut. And some areas of your lawn will be prone to scalping. That's where the blade really gets right down to the ground and just rips through the crowns. In fact, I could show you a few places here on my lawn that I accidentally scalped last year and they still haven't fully filled back in. Despite the fact that I take extremely good care of my lawn, when you scalp a spot of your lawn on accident, it takes a lot of time and effort to repair the spot. For that reason, if you are running a rotary mower on the lowest setting or even a real mower lower than the rotaries can go, it's extremely important to have the flattest lawn space you possibly can. You're gonna find lots of people cutting extremely short lawns will have to do lawn leveling periodically, sometimes a couple times every single year, just to get the flattest surface possible. Another problem that I experience with cutting low that is a bigger problem for real mowers is earthworm castings. Earthworms will leave little like mounds of earthworm castings on top of the soil surface. The lower your grass is cut, the larger those mounds are in relation to the grass blades. Your grass blades can kind of mat down into them and cause what appears to be a dirt patch in an otherwise thick, full lawn. For real mowers in particular, the reel, as it spins, will clip those mounds and dull the reel, causing you to have to maintain it a little bit more often than you'd like, especially considering the fact that real mowers are very hard to maintain. A rotary mower, it's very easy to just pop the blade off and sharpen it up in your garage. It doesn't take more than about five to 10 minutes if you're doing it regularly. A real mower is completely different. Even though I don't use a real mower on my lawn, the worm casting mounds are still very noticeable when my lawn is cut on the lowest setting of my rotary mower. And honestly, I'm just kind of tired of having to deal with them. I love the fact that I have worms in my lawn because they do feed the soil biology, but I don't like having the little muddy worm mounds on the lawn so obvious, so noticeable. The other biggest issue with cutting the grass really short is that you really have to cut a lot much more frequently than the average homeowner 
wants to do. Now, people who get really into lawn care really enjoy mowing, and it's not usually a problem for those people, but for the average casual homeowner that wants to keep a nice looking lawn, most people are gonna find the amount of time that you have to spend mowing the lawn is a no-go. They're gonna find if they're cutting their grass short, they are cutting the grass more often than they actually want to. And what ends up happening as the, as the season progresses is that they'll keep cutting it low, but they'll start cutting it less frequently, which means they're cutting off a significantly large portion of the leaf blade every mowing session. That's hard on the mower and it's really hard on your grass. It stresses it out. Your lawn is never gonna perform well if you're cutting too much leaf blade off at any one time. And if you develop a pattern of not mowing frequently enough because you're trying to cut it too low, then you're really gonna stress your lawn out, especially as you go into summer. Because when you go into the summer with a short cut grass, the heat from the sky is gonna warm the soil up a lot more than tall cut grass which means your lawn is going to dry out faster. So you're gonna to have to water it slightly more frequently. And if you're watering slightly more frequently in the summer, especially in humid climates, you could be setting yourself up for a fungal problem, especially if you've already stressed your grass out enough by cutting too much off at any one time too frequently throughout the spring and the early summer. Now I do love having short grass, for one, I've got lots of kids, we have lots of toys, we never lose anything in the yard because the grass is short enough for us to see anything. My kids can play with marbles out on the grass and we don't lose any of them. The taller your grass is, the more likely it is that you're going to lose things in your grass. That seems like a silly concept, but anyone with children will understand how many toys go out onto the lawn. Every time I have to mow the lawn, I have to clean up all of the toys before I run the mower over it. I would much rather run the mower over a shortcut lawn because I am convinced every single time that I run the mower that I'm not gonna hit a toy or a rock or some other thing that my children deposited onto the lawn surface. Now, if you don't have kids and nobody's really using the yard for with like toys and whatnot, cutting the grass taller, it's actually a lot simpler to do. You don't have to cut as often. You might not necessarily even have to water quite as often. You'll still need the same amount of water, but you might be able to go an extra day in between watering sessions, especially during the summer when fungal threats can be quite severe in certain areas of the country. When the lawn is cut taller, slight deviations in the flatness of your lawn surface are going to go completely unnoticed. It's not that big of a deal to have a lawn that's not perfectly level. In fact, a tall cut lawn, there's almost no reason whatsoever to level it unless it's actually physically bothering you to walk through a divot or if you get heavy rains and there's always a pooling of water in one area of the lawn, that can be really bad for the grass. Those areas could be leveled but general flatness isn't that big of a deal because your mower isn't going to notice the difference. Again, for the vast majority of homeowners who are not diehard lawn addicts, cutting the grass taller is simply going to be easier. You're gonna be able to go a longer period of time between mowings, be able to go a little bit longer between irrigation sessions. It's easier to make the lawn look good. And that's why most lawns that do look good are cut tall. As you cut the grass down low, it can look better than a tall cut lawn, but the amount of work necessary to make it look good is so significant that only the diehards do it. Now I'm making this video now because this is early spring. This is the time to make the decision because once you decide the height of cut, the best course of action is to remain at the exact same height of cut for the entire year. We call this training the grass blade. If you cut the grass at one height in the early spring and then start a pattern of cutting the grass every five days, every six days, every seven days, maybe every three days, Whatever that pattern is, you're going to be cutting the grass to the same height all year long. It's going to get used to it, and that's how the grass is going to thrive. Now, as a general ballpark rule of thumb, if you're running a grass like a zoysia or a bermuda or a perennial rye, you might want to err on the slightly shorter side. If you're running a grass like Kentucky bluegrass, St. Augustine, tall fescue, those you're going to want to cut slightly on the longer side. 
and in almost all cases for cool season grasses, during the summer, you're gonna to wanna to bring your hide of cut up ever so slightly. That's gonna help you get through summer stress. Now, there's lots more to say about this. A lot of it is very detailed stuff that only die-hard lawn care addicts care about. What you probably care about, however, is just having a good looking lawn. And I have an entire spring lawn care guide for that purpose. I'm gonna to link to it up here in the corner. I suggest you take a look at it. I also have link down in the description below, supplemental materials that will help you get through the year with the best lawn possible. Go down in the description or take a look at the link in the corner.